Hey City Youth, what's up? We're a youth group about knowing Jesus and making Jesus known. And we gather together to encourage one another through life, love and maturity. In this week's episode, Mika will be undergoing some challenges and then we'll all sit together and share God's word. Thanks girls. We're here with Nikki and Nikki is going to be bringing the word for us today. He's from City Youth Melbourne West. He's the youth director there. Uh, can't wait to get into God's word with him today. And we're going to get to know him. We're going to ask him a few questions, a couple of curly ones, of course. Um, but yeah, Nikki, how are you, mate? Yeah, doing well. How are you guys? Good. Doing all right. Doing all right. We've got a few questions that we usually ask our kids each week in these interviews. So we want to start you off in the same way with a couple of rapid fire questions on 50 oh. 50 choices. Uh, first one. Do you prefer YouTube or TikTok? YouTube. Got to be. <laughs> All the way. Like TikTok, it's got some good content. I'm not going to lie. It's helped me through quarantine, but uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can put myself in that category. <laughs> Love it. And I know you're not at school, but do you prefer in-person school or online school, Nikki? Oh. If you were at school. Well, Oh, if I was at school, no, nah, I'll say in person. You got to be like, yeah. I love the, I love being around some mates. So, um, definitely in person. Yeah. Like we said, you are in Melbourne, which means that unfortunately for you, you're still in lockdown, still in isolation. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Um, what's been the worst thing about that that you found? I think. For me, it's obviously for everyone, it's uh, less social interaction, hanging out with friends and family. Um, but for me, I'd say I've been hardest hit just not being able to eat in restaurants. Like I, you can get takeaway, but it hits different. You know, the food hits differently when it's fresh in the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been killing me. It's been killing me but... but yeah, although it is a tough time, uh, it is a time for where we can spend time with friends and family. So has there been any stories of grace that you've seen uh, during this time of lockdown? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, I think as far as, as grace goes, there's the aspect of everything being online and everyone's already online in general. It makes things so much more accessible. So um, just in my own circles, I've seen people coming to church more and being able to invite more people and even in, in the youth setting as well some of our youth have been more comfortable um, inviting mates because, you know, they're just in the comfort of their own home and logging on. So, yeah, that's been really, really encouraging and amazing to see, especially in a tough time like this. Yeah, that's really cool. And it is really encouraging. Um, it's great to hear about those stories that are going on in youth, but there's um, a lot of uh, tough times being involved in youth, a lot of hours that gets put in uh, as a volunteer, especially, um, why do you do it, man? What, what motivates you? What keeps you going in the youth ministry space? Um, I'd say, well, number one, I love Jesus. So that's, that's what keeps me going. Um, but more than that, um, I guess the relational aspect of it. Uh, growing up, I wasn't in a youth group or anything like that. So all of these experiences, um, they're still new to me as well. So you know, gathering with other youth groups, gathering with you guys, um, camps, all that stuff. It's, it's all new experiences to me. So it's always fresh. Um, but I also know, especially through high school, how much, you know, the world throws at, at, at you and, you know, when we're just teenagers. So um, I'm not that old, so I'm still pretty fresh <laughs> out of high school and, um, and uni. So just being able to walk with the youth as they tackle those things and help them any way I can, direct them to Jesus um, in a, any way I possibly can. Um, yeah, that's why I love it. That's encouraging. Love that. And um, you are at City Youth Melbourne West. Um, and what are some things going on with West specifically that you can encourage us with? Um, well, we're pretty, uh, we're pretty laid back <laughs> out here in West. Uh, that's how we do it. So, um, honestly, being in lockdown, <laughs> At the start of the year, we had so many plans, um, not just in gathering with, with um, the rest of City Youth across Melbourne and, and, and you guys as well, um, but in our, own, in our own group. 
um, as you know, being in lockdown, that kind of limits your um, opportunities to do things. So right now, we're kind of just coasting along online on Zoom. <laughs> so trying to keep it as fresh as we possibly can. Um, so yeah, there's not too much. I, I wish I had something more exciting to, to announce or anything, but you know, we're just persevering through uh, this COVID, COVID lockdown. And um, yeah, hopefully soon enough, we'll, we'll all be in person again. Looking forward to that. Yeah, and it's still good, man. Like, just a reminder that even during this time, God is still doing his thing. Uh, his word's still going out. His uh, mission is continuing on. And it uh, doesn't matter what's going on, that's going to keep on happening and keep on moving forward. So uh, we are excited to hear from you, encouraged that uh, that's going to happen now, that we're going to get a chance to get into God's word. But we've got one more really uh, important question for you that's specific maybe to us in Geelong uh, but it is a very important question to us and that is do you prefer would you rank higher on your scale of things that you like and dislike mushrooms or red skins <laughs> so um you're talking about lollies here right yeah, yeah. Well, mushroom is a vegetable. Yeah, and red skin the lollies. Which one? Oh, yeah. Like? <laughs> I, I was because I, I know what red skins are. I was like, what are these mushroom lollies? Um, <laughs> why are they? Why are they two completely different things? This is a very controversial question. Like, if there are questions that will devise things, it's this question. <laughs> oh, well, if I was choosing what I would want to eat. I'm, I'm obviously going to choose Redskins. Ooh, good choice. That's a good, well, choice. Uh, good yeah. choice. Good choice. You get to stick around. Uh, <laughs> we're coming to get the chance now to hear from you because you've answered that correctly. Um, first, we're going to check in with Tali. She's going to read us the word this week, and then we're going to hear from Vicky. Hey guys, today's Bible reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26 to 40. What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two, or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. For God is, a God of, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. As in all churches of the saints, the women should keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission, as the law also says. If there is anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Or was it from you that the word of God came? Or are you the only ones it has reached? If anyone thinks that he is a prophet, a spiritual, he should recognize that the things I am writing to you are a command from the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. So, my brothers, earnestly desire prophecy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but all things should be done decently and in order. G'day City Youth. Uh, if you missed it earlier, my name is Nikki. I'm a youth leader at City on a Hill, Melbourne West. And I'm really happy to be joining you guys today to look into the second half of 1 Corinthians together. Um, but before I do that, how about we uh, pray together? Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day you've given us. Thank you for your word and your love and your grace that we can still gather together online. I pray, Lord, that today you would speak through me as I talk to the youth. Um, and I pray, Lord, that you'll open up our hearts and minds to receive this word um, to apply it to our lives, Lord, and ultimately we'll grow um, in our faith and relationship with you, God, through this. Um, and I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, today we find ourselves in the second half of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And this really finishes the section where Paul's speaking about the important principles of church life together. Uh, Paul's spoken about um, women and men in the church. He's spoken about um, the, the Lord's Supper. And recently he's been speaking about the use of spiritual gifts in the church. Specifically, um, he's been speaking about the use of tongues and prophecy. Um, so now we're at the end of the chapter. We have to look back and ask, what is Paul's overarching message for us? What can we take away from this? And I believe that takeaway point is that all things must be done for edification. All things must be done to build up the body of Christ. And that's his overarching command regarding the use of spiritual gifts. And he reminds us here yet again in verse 26. So let's have a look. It says, What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. So Paul says all things must be done for building up, and that's his big idea. It doesn't help if it only builds you up. It doesn't help if you're only using your gift for yourself. It needs to be used for everyone. It needs to build up the church together. And as we go on, Paul begins to give practical examples of what this looks like in the church. And the first example we see is in verse 27. And that says, If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two, or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. So what's the first instruction given here? Well, it's letting one person speak at a time. From what we can see in the passage, it seems like there's some sort of chaos at people speaking over each other in the church. And Paul's coming and saying, hey, this isn't loving, nor is it edifying. This isn't growing anyone with this type of confusion. So we move on to verse 28 and we see the second example um, where Paul says, But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in the church and speak to himself and to God. So not only should we keep silent, but when there's people speaking in tongues, there needs to be an interpreter. Paul's saying that without an interpreter, how are we supposed to know what's being said? So how is that um, edifying to the church if no one knows what's being said? Um, and what we're seeing so far is there's these amazing gifts, uh, prophecy in tongues. They're amazing gifts. Um, however, as amazing as they are, when they're used in the wrong way, they don't build up the church in the way that they're designed to. So then we move on and we see the third example of uh, building up the church together. Um, it's in verse 29. It says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. So what's the example given to us here? Well, it's to judge prophecy, uh, to validate um, what is being said. Prophecy is an amazing gift. However, we can't just believe any person coming in saying, God told me this, so you need to go do it. Uh, no, as members of the body, we're able to and we're advised to actually look into the word ourselves to, to check uh, the word being said to us, to check prophecy and to t check teaching uh, to see if it's correct. Um, and we see all these things really summarized in verse 33, where Paul's saying, uh, God is not a God of confusion. He's a God of peace. Um, and our gatherings generally uh, reflect God's nature. Um, and what we're seeing here, what we're being reminded is that God is not a God of chaos. He's a God of order. So knowing this, we have to be mindful of how we act and how we come when we gather together in church. You see, when people gather uh, in the church, there's, there's already an order that's set. Uh, we all know our roles in the church. Uh, for example, you have pastors and, and the prayer team and the worship leaders and welcome. It. The list goes on. People come and they know their role in the church. And they know where they're being gifted. Um, none of us are rocking up to church on a Sunday, grabbing a coffee and getting the run sheet and saying, hey, pastor, you know what? You, you take a break today because I feel like preaching. Uh, no, one, no one's doing that because there's already the authority and order set uh, for who's doing that. Um, and look, you might not be up the front leading worship or doing something in that capacity, but that doesn't mean um, you come empty handed to the gathering. That doesn't mean that we don't come without a purpose. No, we all come together with a purpose. We all come together with our gifts that we've been given. And we do that to glorify God and to build up the church together. Um, because when we do that, when the body comes together in the order that's set by God, that's when the gospel becomes clear. Now, it's important to know Paul isn't against the use of gifts uh, in the church. He's been saying that throughout the chapter. Um, and he says it yet again later in the chapter. But in between these two sections, there's a difficult few verses where Paul is speaking about uh, women in the church and instructing them. Um, and this section is uh, taken out of context a fair bit. And Paul's use, Paul's choice of words doesn't 
uh, help it in any other way as well. Um, however, when we read this, we need to remember the culture and context of the time. Um, and so we got to look at, well, what else is happening in this chapter? Uh, we know that it's not just women being told off here. Um, it's not women, just only them doing something wrong. There's been people uh, speaking in tongues and prophesying in ways that don't build up the church as well. And Paul's come to them and said the same warning, you need to stop that and do it this way. Um, and so what seems to be happening here is there's a way in which the women in Corinth were acting, which was causing disunity, causing confusion in the same way that these other gifts were causing disunity and confusion. And Paul's coming and saying, this needs to stop. And uh, what it seems like is what he's saying is really limited by the context. You can't take it out of this context or else it'll sound really bad telling women to stay quiet in the church. I don't think we can say and apply that to every uh, circumstance that women stay quiet in the church when this is really limited by the context. Um, and there's so much uh, to be broken down in this passage. Um, you can really have a sermon just on this, breaking breaking this down. And I would encourage you if you have questions or you're um, confused or curious about this to speak to your leaders um, more about it. Um, but I think what we can take away from it is that the the idea of order and authority in the church is something that can still be applied uh, and not just to women it can be applied to everyone in the church we're all gathering together in the church so we all have that responsibility um, to bring our gifts in a way that is edifying to the church not causing disunity or disruption um, it's uh, it's definitely a tricky tricky passage um, but these principles still stand uh, that there's a way for us to act in the gathering. There's a way for us to act in church which, which doesn't go against the authority set for us. Um, now, if, as we move on throughout this chapter, Paul has said a lot about the behavior in the church, uh, about using gifts in the church. And at the end of the passage, we see him encouraging us in the use of our gifts. And this is in verse 39 to 40. And it says, So my brothers earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but all things should be done decently and in order. And in order. And that's his clause. <clears throat> These things are good things. They're all good gifts given by God, but they must be done uh, in order and for edification. Now, all of us are meant to come into the gathering with this sole intent in mind uh, to build up the body in love. We're all personally and wonderfully blessed with gifts uh, given, to, given to us. Um, and we're called to come expectant and as participants. God's given us these gifts. He wants us to use them uh, for their purpose. Um, and, to, and that's to, to build up the body, to build up our brothers and sisters. He doesn't want us to just be watching uh, <clears throat> from the sidelines. He wants us to be playing. He wants us to be using these gifts. Um, and our old mate, Matt Chandler, he, he summed this up really well in this quote where he says, God has given us the power of the spirit, the gifts of the kingdom, and the call to all of us, a variety of gifts at a variety of levels in a variety of places for the praise of his glorious grace. That's, that's our call. That's, that's what we're, we're called to do, to, to use these gifts for the praise of God's glorious grace, to build up the body. Um, so today we've talked a lot about order in the church and, and gifts. And so you might be wondering, well, where do I fit into that? Well, City Youth, you may be the young ones of the church, um, but that doesn't mean you're any less gifted than the next person at church. Um, and hey, maybe some of you don't know what your gift is yet. Uh, but I would encourage you, if you're that person, to speak with your leaders and your friends and, and they, they can walk with you as you discover that. And I promise what you'll find um, is these amazing gifts that can be used to glorify God. And they come with a purpose and a call. Um, and that call is bringing us into the middle of the arena to, to use these gifts, to, to participate um, in the body of Christ with these gifts. Because when the body comes together, when we all come together in the order that God has set for us, using our gifts, the gospel becomes clear. And when the gospel becomes clear, that's when people know Jesus, when people come to Jesus and lives are transformed. And for us, when it's clear to us, we just grow deeper in our relationship with God. And that's the most amazing thing. So as we use our gifts, we need to remember they're all good things and we're encouraged to use them. However, we need to remember that all things should be done decently and in order to build up the body of Christ. 
And I just want to encourage you in that as I pray um, for us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you love us and that you have personally uh, blessed us with gifts to serve you. We thank you, Lord, that these gifts are freely given to us and that um, I pray you'll continue to use us and our gifts to serve and grow the church. I pray, Lord, that we'll be able to walk with each other um, as we learn to use our gifts and that ultimately, God, we'll grow in our love and relationship with you. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nikki. So good to hear from you, brother. Man, it's so good that we are one movement, mm. many churches, and that we can connect all across Australia. We're not just limited to just Geelong or mm. just Melbourne, just Brisbane. It is so good. Um, if you want to get connected into any of our city youth youth groups, uh, you can check out the bio. There's all the information you need to get connected into them. But Brendan... There's some exciting mm. things happening at City on a Hill, especially yeah. the each, each of those places does their own thing on a Friday night, so get in contact to see how you can get on board with those. But the last Friday of Term 3, the last Friday of every term, mm. we connect together as one big youth group. We call them our Zion events, that uh, current expression of a future reality where all, we're all going to be together. Uh, we're celebrating that in anticipation of mm. that happening uh, all together celebrating the term that's being uh, just celebrating being one group uh, that are following Jesus together. So make sure uh, you pencil that in last Friday of term. Be looking forward to that. Uh, we are. So we yeah. hope you are too. Absolutely. So make sure you pencil that one in. But Brendan, the memory verse. Oh, You've yeah. been hand passing that off for like <laughs> two or three weeks now. What? And you said you'd nail it. The first week we introduced this verse... He said he'd nail it. I haven't heard him nail it yet. So, Brendan, don't look. What is our memory verse? We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 56 and 57. That's wrong. No, definitely right. <laughs> and they tell us the power... Oh, no. <laughs> He's up the woods now. I've got it wrong already. Go again. Come the on. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But, 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 thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That is such a reverse. I love hearing it every it's time good. we it is good. read it, memorize it. So thanks, Brendan. Good to see you actually have memorized it, not just said you were going to. We're all over it. We're all over it. But we haven't forgotten about it today. We still have our challenge to come. Mm. This week, up to the plate is Mika. Our junior girls wanted to see her put to the test. So let's check in with her, see what she has in store, see how she handles the challenge today. Well, we are here with Mika for our challenge. Mika, thanks for joining us. How are you feeling? Um, not good. I've been <laughs> dreading it, but I'm doing it. That's yeah. good. Awesome. <laughs> well, today's challenge, you're going to need a blindfold, which you have handy. Yes. If you could blindfold yourself, make no cheating, otherwise you'll spoil the surprises. Uh-huh. So... <laughs> thanks, Brendan. <laughs> this these challenge is going to be, we're going to be giving Mika different kinds of food um, and she's going to taste it and try and guess what it is. Uh, we need, there we go, beautiful, awesome. So to start, we have, do we start with sweet or savory, Brendan? Uh, I reckon savory. savory. You can't have dessert before your main meal. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. All right, well, we'll start off on a, on a run there. We'll, is that focus? Yeah. Beautiful, all right. Hang on, might need a bit of assistance on this one. There we go, beautiful. Ooh, yeah. All right, make up. Oh, I can really smell it. Here comes the airplane. Oh, wait, don't try to... Oh. There you go. What's that one? Delicious tuna. Tuna is correct. I mm. hate tuna. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> just uh, this under here. <laughs> awesome. All right. 
Delicious. All right, All right. a bit of dessert to swallow. Oh, goodness me. Uh, here's what we've got next. This is tasty, I think. Yeah, that one, that one was alrighty. Alright, apple puree? It's like pear no, baby no. food, okay. so not right. bad. Good guess. That's pretty good guess. Oh, that, I, no, that's a, it's one and a half out of two so far. Sure. Yeah. Well, we've got a classic here, if you can see what that is. This is a very important This is a very test. important one. So, oh, this is thanks to Nikki. Over up, there you go. Oh, mushrooms. Hey, yeah. well done. Yeah. You don't She's look odd. like you're not yeah. enjoying that enough. Don't mind a mushroom. No, oh, that's, that's disappointing. Good. I hope this one's really, really bad then. Yeah. For saying that mushrooms are good. You regret that. This is what's coming up next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to expect the fruits on my It's like, coming oh, out. Yeah. Yeah. Custard. Yeah. What flavour? Banana? <laughs> Chopped mm. caramel, Chopped apparently. Caramel. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was, I That's... mean, I'm, yeah, okay, peanut caramel afterwards, yep. Yeah, okay, good. Very good. And uh, this is our last savoury option. Mm. Mm. I think this is, <laughs> it can't be as bad as tuna. That smell, canned tuna could probably make me vomit if I had to deal with no. it to for longer than I'd say about 10 seconds. All right, here it comes, Mega. You'll love this one. Mmm. What was that? <laughs> Do you need another oh, one? Oh, yeah. Do you need another one? No, I'm good. What was that? Well, Fish? chicken. Chicken? Oh, chicken. Definitely chicken. Um, but this is the last one. Oh. This will hopefully take the bad taste away because this is always good. Always good memories from this one. No. Um, I can't break it into smaller parts, so... Uh, you just have to have a go. Myself. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Ah, uh, red skin? Red skin. Straight away. Good well done. <laughs> well, I can't even bite it. Good one. Uh, five out of, no, what did we give her? Four and a half out of six. I mean, she got, she got the mushroom, she got the tuna, the, she didn't get the pear puree, oh, she got yeah. apple puree, and then she yeah. did banana custard. Oh yeah. So. Another half. Yeah. Do you want to have a guess at the one that you ate before the red skin? Mm. I did think it was fishy, but you're saying it's chicken. It's yeah. chicken. And it's not chicken of the sea like tuna. Uh. Why don't you unblindfold yourself, because we're now done. I can't see it. <laughs> Put your glasses <laughs> on. Suspense is longer. That's not human food! <laughs> you did well. Uh, wow. You did well. Oh, Mika yeah. walks out on us. We are done for this week. Uh, Mika survived the challenge. Sam, have you had a good time in this episode? I've had a great time. <laughs> the fact that you didn't guess what it was, it wasn't too bad, obviously. She thought uh, the tuna was worse, I, I reckon. I swallowed but it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad I was blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it has been good, City Youth. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Uh, but until next week, let us this week, in all that we do, continue to live to know Jesus and make Jesus known. Amen. Amen. <laughs>